and welcome to 1.5. We're going to be talking about some specific postulates today, um, but I first wanted to just talk about Euclid. He was a genius. Basically, he taught a system of geometry that was the only method for two, 20 centuries. You know, it was uh, before Jesus. His system formed the basis of physics and astronomy, and although other systems do exist today, Euclidean geometry is still used, and that is what this course concentrates on. You actually have to learn his method before you can learn the other methods, because they're still based in his model. Okay, so let's decide what logic really is. The definition of logic is an interrelation or sequence of facts or events when seen as inevitable or predictable. Another definition is something that forces a decision apart from or in opposition to reason. Geometry is a system of definitions, postulates, and theorems that is built in a logical progression. Super important that we learn logic in this class. Three qualities for an ideal postulate system is first we're going to talk about a postulate system being consistent. So when we give you a group of postulates they need to be consistent and they don't contradict one another. So let's talk about an example of, of in Okay, so here's the example, postulate one, two distinct lines intersect in exactly one point. Postulate two, two distinct lines intersect in exactly two points. So is it possible to have a line intersect in exactly one point and in exactly two points? It's inconsistent because they contradict each other. So we need our systems to be consistent. So we need them to be consistent. We also need them to be independent. No postulate can be deduced or proved from the other postulates in the system. So every postulate has to be necessary. Let's talk about an example of when a postulate might not be necessary and not be independent. So if postulate one says all dogs are carnivores, Postulate 2 says Smokey is a carnivore. Postulate 3, Smokey is a dog. Which one of these is unnecessary? Think about it for a minute. Write it down in your notes. Push pause. And then see if you're right. Okay, if you said postulate number 2 is not necessary, then you are correct. We can actually prove postulate 2 with postulate 1 and postulate 3 and make it a theorem. We can make Smokey as a carnivore based on postulate 1 and 3 and make that a theorem. All dogs are carnivores, Smokey is a dog, so therefore Smokey is a carnivore would be a theorem. Okay, so if one postulate is unnecessary, then the system is not independent. So we have consistent, independent, and now complete. Every statement that can be expressed with a postulate system can be proved or disproved from the postulates. So there are no unanswered questions in the system. All right, consistent is the most important of the three. These are not equally important uh, pieces of a um, ideal postulate system. Consistent is the most important. The Euclidean model, which we just talked about why we're studying that particular kind of geometry, is based on five incident postulates, okay? These are the foundation to the system of geometry, and there are 23 more, actually, but these five are kind of like those first definitions we had to learn. There were three that did, couldn't be defined, so now there's these five postulates that are the next brick in building up our knowledge of geometry. 
and guess what? There's no such thing as an ideal system. <laughs> we can't make one. Um, so does that mean that our whole thing falls apart? No, it doesn't because God is the foundation for geometry. He created it and He is consistent, independent, and complete. So we can put our faith in that, that even though um, geometry may not be perfect because you know, man created a lot of these things, these rules, but God ultimately is our creator. Alright, so we're going to get right into it, and you have to know these postulates. You memorize them, learn how they look. I drew, well, I tried to draw some sort of picture to go with the last one, um, but you need to know these. I can't stress the importance. Okay, let's Incidence just means um, that sets of points, lines, and planes intersect in space somewhere. There's some partial overlapping. That's why it's called incidence the incidence postulates. Easy for me to say. But just remember a postulate is something that's assumed without proof, okay, that it's being self-evident or generally accepted. I didn't talk about this yet on um, the last um, lesson, but it's also called an axiom because normally we don't call them that so I didn't you don't even really have to know that I won't quiz you on axioms but I mean I guess just know that in the back of your mind if you hear the word axiom somewhere it means postulate okay so if I talk about an incidence and a postulate we can put those two words together and say that it's a self-evident truth about an inter intersection of two figures or of a figure in a line so here's the very first one, it's called the expansion postulate. A line contains at least two points. A plane contains at least three non-collinear points. And space contains at least four non-collinear, I'm sorry, non-coplanar points. Super important that you understand. If I only have two points, they are definitely on a line. Now, they could; those two points could be on two different planes, but I can still connect them with a line. A plane has to have three non-collinear points somewhere in it where I can draw, I have to draw more than one line because a plane has infinitely many lines in it. And space has to have at least four, okay? Because I could have four points and I can't make just two lines. I have to make at least a third line, which means I have space, I have a 3D figure. So again, this is the first one you need to memorize. Postulate two is just about lines. It kind of breaks down the first one. Any two points in space lie on exactly one line. So no matter where in space I put two points, I can connect them with a line. Similarly, three distinct non-collinear points lie in exactly one plane. If I have three three random points in space, one plane can go through them all. Flat plane postulate, if two points lie on a plane, and a line containing these two points lies on the same plane. So if the plane and the line share two points, they are, the line is inside the plane. And then the plane intersection postulate. If two planes, then their intersection is exactly one line. And I try to draw you a picture so you could see that there's a line there. Again, since planes aren't really defined and this is just a model, but hopefully you can tell there's a line there where those two planes intersect. Okay, so now I want you to go ahead and write the answers before um, I hit enter. So you're going to have to pause, read these true and false questions individually. They're one on each slide. See if you can answer them and give a description. Okay, so two planes always intersect. Is that true or false and why? So hit pause. Okay, if you said false, they could be parallel is another option, right? Two planes don't always have to intersect. Four non-coplanar points determine space. True or false? Make sure you hit pause. 
it's true. The expansion postulate says so. A plane always contains at least two lines. Okay, true or false? True by the expansion postulate and the line postulate. A plane must contain infinitely many points. True or false? False. Now, look, we know that a plane, if it goes infinite in all directions, that it would have to have infinitely many points in it, right? But our, posh, our first five postulates do not guarantee this yet. Okay, we have not officially found something that says so. So if you put true there, don't beat yourself up because we know infinitely many points are even between zero and one, right? Um, so anyway, but that's why it's false. And last, a plane must contain at least five points. So based on the answer of number four, what do you think this will be? False. Again, nothing in these postulates says anything about a number of points in a plane. Okay, so this is going to be your first WISC summary that is going to be an open summary. Remember, you have to have, you, it's required that you have at least three points. This can be a paragraph with three sentences. It can be three bullet points that you are descriptive about. That's the minimum though. This is kind of a big lesson, so hopefully you can come up with a summary. Now you're going to email it still to me, but it, you will not get a reply today, okay, because there's not a right or wrong answer to these. So do your best, and I'll see you in class.